Hey guys, well as you've probably seen by now, Nintendo had a metric ton of announcements this past month. Uh, so I thought I might cover probably yeah, just a few of them. Um, just give my thoughts on it, and I figured we'd start with the first thing they announced, which of course was Pokemon X and Y versions for the Nintendo 3DS. Now I was very happy to see this announced, uh, particularly after a great retrospective on the series. Um, and I, more than anything though, I am very happy to see that, for, you know, finally, after waiting since the N64, we are getting a main Pokemon adventure in full 3D. And, uh, you know, after waiting so long, it's really great to see that. I mean, we had Colosseum and we had XD Gale of Darkness, uh, but to me, they were never really proper Pokemon games, and I was never a huge fan of them. They were, they were alright. But uh, they've never really been the same quality as uh, you know games like red and uh, blue and yellow and silver and gold and crystal and all the others. So I'm very happy to see that we're finally getting something like that. And uh, it looks like they've done a pretty good job of it. The graphics uh, in the overworld I think could probably be a bit better. I'd say to some extent you could you could really do them on DS, at least going by games like Final Fantasy IV DS and uh, Dragon Quest IX. But even so, I think they've done a really great job on the art style, and I think the battle graphics are really fantastic. Um, adding cell shading to them is really nice, and um, th there's just kind of this great amount of detail to them. They look it, they look better than like uh, the Pokedex 3D Pro models and everything, and I think it's just because of that cell shading. It just adds a little something extra. But uh, so I, I think it looks really great. Uh, in terms of Pokemon it's themselves, I'm not a huge fan of uh, all the starters. I like Fennekin enough, um, which is good because I always pick Fire. But I'm not a fan of Froakie or what was his name, uh, Ches Cheskin or Chespin. Um, or Chesapin, anyway. Uh, he, the, Chesapin is kind of cute, but uh, I, I'm not really a big fan of the shower cap design on, and things like that. But um, yeah, they're, they're alright, they're alright. And I'm very excited to see that, uh, it looks like at least, we're finally getting a new secondary type for all of them. So uh, Fennekin is supposed to be Fire Psychic, uh, while Chespin is fire, oh, sorry, uh, Grass Dark, I believe, and Froakie is uh, Water Fighting. So I'm very, very happy to finally see that shake-up. Because as a Fire user, uh, I have gotten very, very tired of the Fire Fighting starter type. Um, very tired indeed. Um, so it's really great to see that they're shaking that sort of thing up as well. I, in some ways, would have liked to see a break away from even the fire, grass, uh, yeah, water dynamic, but I think this is definitely a very good step because it really does change the dynamic of all these uh, Pokemon. And it means that even though your starter might be weaker to another starter in one aspect, it'll be stronger in another. So it, it really is a great balancing act. Uh, in terms of the legendaries, which are, I believe, the only two other two Pokemon we ever saw, I, I'm not a huge fan of them, but I like them enough. Um, my favourite is definitely the Y Pokemon, which is the giant bird Yeveltal or something like that. Um, and so I, I think that's pretty cool, uh, looking in some of the CGI trailers and stuff like that. Uh, Xerneas, or however you say his name, I'm not a big fan of. Uh, we seem to have seen a lot of deer Pokemon, <laughs> or like horse-based Pokemon. Yeah, well, not horse, but yeah, you know, that sort of that sort of build of Pokemon uh, in Gen Five. So I was kind of hoping for something a little bit different. But you know, I, I think like all Pokemon designs, they do grow on you uh, over time, and particularly once you play the game. But uh, anyway. Aside from that, I'm interested in the fact that you've got those little uh, f you know, footprint pads which allow you to apparently perform some special actions like swinging on vines. I'm curious to see what they do with that. Uh, because, you know, I think a more action-based Pokemon could definitely be interesting. Um, I, am, I very much like the way that often the distance in one of the uh, scenes you can actually see the town and it's the full town. Uh, so that sort of thing's great. It provides something very different from the other, you know, 2D Pokemon games, where you're just kind of, you know, constantly moving forward and hoping that you'll get to the next town soon enough. Um, and aside from that, I'm just a huge fan of uh, the European style, because, uh, well, particularly the French style, I should say, uh, because it's something very different for Pokemon. 
Uh, generations one and two are very, you know, Japanese inspired. Uh, you, you know, Kanto is very Japanese modern, and uh, Johto is kind of a mix of uh, Japanese modern and Japanese, you know, medieval. Um, and then, of course, Hoenn and Sinnoh and Inova. Like Inova, Inova was based on America, I remember. So uh, they've all had kind of had a different flavor to them, and I definitely think that Europe is something that Pokemon hasn't had at all yet. So I'm great. I'm very happy to see that they're actually taking a new artistic direction. But um, aside from that, there's probably not a whole lot to talk about. It's mainly speculation. Uh, one of the things I really find interesting is that DNA symbol that is on the Japanese logo. Some people have actually been suggesting that you might be able to fuse some Pokemon, uh, which actually would make one of the old rumors from Pokemon Red uh, <laughs> come true. If anyone remembers the Pokemon Factory, uh, which you got into by defeating the Elite Four 50 times, I think it was. Uh, that would that was supposed to be al allow you to uh, combine Pokemon and do things like in the anime how you had Venustoice. Uh, you're supposed to be able to do stuff like that in the actual game, so. Uh, if they do do something like that, it'll be very interesting to see what form it takes and how it ends up working. We've already seen some kinds of Pokemon Fusion uh, in Black and White 2, where you had, um, of course, Kyurem and uh, Reshiram or Zekrom fusing. And I think there were a few examples uh, earlier on in Gen 4 or something like that. Uh, but we, we've had a few interesting things happen on that line, so it'll be, I'll be very interested to see if they do anything with that. I mean, it could only be that there's like a pool of maybe 10 or 20 Pokemon that you can combine together, or possibly you can combine two Pokemon together just to get a stats increase. Uh, you actually, you know, no, nothing changes in the appearance except maybe colouring or something like that. Um, there's lots of interesting things there. And on the topic of, you know, customizable stuff, we may finally have a trainer who we can actually customise a little bit and make our own. Which I think would be very cool, but as... You know, it, it's it's never that really, not that big a thing to me. Uh, unless we're getting a full online component this time where we can actually run around on the overworld map with people all around the world. Which, uh, there's speculation that might happen. Um, I don't think it's that big a deal because you're not really going to be seeing that many people, aside from the beginnings of online battles. Uh, and it really doesn't matter that much to me. But if they do include that feature, then I think that'll be very neat. But uh, I think that's really all I can talk about until we get some more information. Hopefully uh, at E3 we'll get a, a lot more stuff. I imagine it might even be playable considering it's targeting an October release. And let me just say thank you so much Nintendo for giving a worldwide simultaneous release. Because, uh, you know, I, I still remember the days of uh, being in Australia and getting games ridiculous amounts of time after their American or uh, Japanese releases, so <laughs> which has led to some difficult situations down the line with region blocking and me trying to get around that. But anyway, so thanks a lot for watching, guys. Let me know what your comments and uh, thoughts are on Pokemon X and Y in, in the comment section below. Uh, and yeah, I'll see you later.